I want to welcome you back to another episode of what I've branded Pivotal. Since these interview style segments tackle impactful CPG industry topics and lessons from the business leaders that live it every day. I consider myself extremely lucky that I didn't ignore those topics, activities, and ideas that dominated a significant amount of my time throughout life. While I don't think I have any special talents, I've been passionately curious about the intersection of those things, and that has allowed me to create this wonderful professional life today. That being said, I'm naturally drawn to people that have similar approaches to life. So it won't be any surprise to you why Mark French and I have become friends. Currently, Mark is the CEO of the clean sports nutrition brand, Don't Quit, but his entire past is a masterclass on how living at the intersections of your passions can create massively successful results. In our conversation, we cover everything from how his entrepreneur spirit at one of the largest media companies in the world led him into his first CPG venture to those lessons being applied with the recent merger of X2 Performance and Don't Quit Sports Nutrition. Additionally, we expand on how that business combination happened and why its synergy should be powerful within the beverage industry. Moreover, we explore the aspirational brand storytelling approach of Don't Quit and where the powder supplement format might fit in his future strategic game plan. And before we jump into those insightful topics and more, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the supporter of this content, Cognizant. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, plus y'all see the branded beverage cooler over my shoulder in YouTube videos, but whether it's in traditional supplement formats or included in an energy drink like Don't Quit Clean Sports Energy plus Hydration, I'm consuming the brain energy ingredient Cognizant every day to stay at peak performance levels. To learn more, I'll leave a link to the Cognizant website in this content's description. But without further delay, here is the recent conversation I had with my good friend and CEO of Don't Quit, Mark French. So we were running through what would be the good background. And I, and I think um, the first time we ever talked, or at least connected over a video call earlier this year, I was mentioning that your office background maybe gives mine a run for its money. But uh, Mark, thanks for joining me. Appreciate the time. I'm thrilled to be here. You got to tell me about that Bob Ross dribbling a basketball <laughs> picture. It's great. Yeah, I, tr I try to uh, throw a little bit of personality in my background because I feel like the type of content that I create is like really dense uh, strategic stuff. So that's the yeah. only opportunity I have to like really show anything about me. <laughs> I love it. But uh, helmets are probably a good transition into, I would say like the intersection, at least professionally that you've lived, I would maybe argue your whole life. Um, and I think that intersection is like sports, entertainment, and technology. And then we'll kind of see how that rolls into like consumer. But anything that I've kind of heard from you or, or kind of done a little bit of background, like it always seems like in some intersection, that's where you've, you've been. Yeah, I've been really fortunate in the sense that I've always worked on things that I'm really passionate about. And um, sports has definitely been uh, a key underlining factor um, in my career, but not, not in the early stages, right? I started in media uh, with NBC Universal, um, was fortunate to build two startups within a big legacy company, which definitely gave me uh, some great entrepreneurial learnings. But one of the first businesses that I built was our events business. Um, and it's right when NBC got the rights to Sunday Night Football. And my thesis was, you know, there's a ton of opportunity to bring in a new audience, not just to view it, um, a, a younger skewing audience who loves football, but how can we get in front of those consumers with, with events? So we actually created a national flag football tournament, um, the NBC Sunday Night Football. And that really got my juices flowing because I love football, um, but I also just love uh, the marketing that goes alongside talking to passionate sports fans, uh, not just football, basketball, but even, you know, what we see now with Kendall and Peloton, just how passionate consumers are around sports, health, wellness, and, and fitness. And, 
you know, after leaving NBC Universal and starting my own business, which was a consumer goods product business, you know, leaned into those passions around sports and solving problems that really started with athletes. So solving problems unique to athletes, uh, but then scaling those with products like our, you know, instant cooling towel that, yes, all the NBA, NFL players are using it, but anybody mowing their lawn, working out on a Peloton bike, um, you know, could utilize those products. So yeah, I've been really, really fortunate to always, always setting out to solve problems, you know, not trying to be a me too product, but what can we do that's, you know, filling a white space. Um, and just been fortunate that those uh, value props have always been around health and wellness, uh, which obviously has a lot of parallels to sports. I like what you mentioned around kind of the time you were at NBC Universal and just being entrepreneurial. And, and I, I'm going to say this, and, and it's coming from the space that I've been an entrepreneur for the last 11 years, um, but I'm in a lot of offices for clients and things like that. And, and I tend to try to always find the person that has that, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. And it's kind of that idea of like an entrepreneur, like, you know, thinking Ooh. about how do I create value or create, you know, new opportunities within this business that has a ton of resources and opportunities and things that I can kind of rally up and, and kind of carve out your own thing. And I think those people arguably then eventually start to go off and do their own thing, which, which you yeah. did. But I think there's a, it's ingrained into somebody that I think they think like, how do I create value? How do I create something out of nothing? Yeah. And you know, I've been really fortunate ever since those days of, building and scaling NBC everywhere, and then us going off and building and scaling mission that I've actually been asked to go talk to big uh, publicly traded companies about that entrepreneurship, speed to market, innovation. And I often joke, you know, it was harder to build a business within NBC than it was actually to go build it on my own. Um, because change, right? The word disruption is a real word. Like, so asking people to do things differently than the way they've done it, but really taking a chance because you don't know, like in my case, I didn't know if TV screens in the back of a taxi cab or TV screens on gas pumps. I believed I had a thesis. I had a hypothesis that this could be groundbreaking. But when you start asking a whole employee base, to change everything we're doing in terms of how do we program it, right? It's very different than what we're putting on TVs. It's gotta be 30 seconds in length and it's gotta be customized for that specific environment. How you sell it, asking salespeople, hey, you can't just talk to the TV buyer now, you gotta to talk to the out-of-home buyer. Uh, it, it's hard to do, but you know, I think with any strong entrepreneur, it's like with your investors, like you have to have people above you that believe in the vision that get behind you and, and you gotta have thick skin. But Building a business within a big legacy business can be extremely rewarding, but it's equally as hard, just in different ways. Now, you mentioned Mission, and honestly, I remember it was a skincare company or, or had some type of application because I remember either coming across it or you know having it, if it was, I don't know if it was a GNC or vitamin shop or, or something like that in the early days, but I remember coming across it. And then also you mentioned the cooling towels, but... What I was most interested in was the, you know, the invention of the court grip, um, because, you know, you kind of glossed over the fact that I think you were a ball boy when you were younger. Um, did that idea come from that time or was it something that just kind of morphed into, you know, this idea? Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll unpack your, your question. While with NBC Universal, uh, GE owned NBC at the time and created what's called the Peacock Equity Fund. And because we were doing something that was really hard, right? It was well before the phone is what the phone is today. We were delivering geo-based targeted content to moving taxis with geo-based advertisements. So the guys at GE said to me, hey, if you see anything that we should invest in or that we should acquire, you know, let us know. So I started working with the GE investment team. And I saw a lot of, you know, interesting business plans. It's right when NBC everywhere was taking off, right? So people were coming in and pitching every idea to put screens on all these different places. And my thesis was, you know, just because you can put a screen uh, anywhere doesn't mean you should. 
Um, and I remember very clearly a guy came in pitching me about putting screens on top of urinals and he had already raised $10 million and was trying to convince me it's a great place for NBC content. And it's, it literally said to me, you know what, I'm going to go start my own business. Like, um, and in the back of my mind, it's something I'd been ideating for a while. Uh, you mentioned it, you know, I was a ball boy for the Knicks, uh, been really blessed to have some amazing relationships and partnerships to this day based off those early relationships, but had been around the game of basketball, uh, playing basketball my entire life. And I was just fascinated by, you know, one problem that had not been solved in the game. So while working at NBC, I started moonlighting. I, I hired a couple of NBA students and started building what I consider to be my dream team. And a few of those teammates are involved in, in Don't Quit. It's our, you know, our fifth venture since, um, one of which being Dave Cohen, who heads up marketing uh, for Don't Quit. And, you know, I think any entrepreneur needs to make sure you're not just solving a problem that's important to you. You got to really make sure it's si there's a sizable, um, scalable opportunity. Uh, without boring you, I ended up uh, hiring some chemical engineers um, that specialized in rubber uh, mm -hmm. and traction. And the problem that we were setting out to solve was slipping and sliding on dusty courts. So whether you're, you know, an average basketball player like myself or the top athletes in the NBA who are wearing brand new sneakers every night on the best courts in the world, they're still constantly wiping the bottom of their shoe. Or if you're really a vulgar pig like myself, you're spitting in your hand and wiping the bottom of your shoe just to get better traction. And fast forward, you know, that all-star team that I mentioned, including Dave Cohen, also included Dwayne Wade, uh, some of the top chemical engineers uh, in the world, some of the best packaging minds in the world. And we developed uh, what's called Cork Grip. And uh, Foot Locker uh, bought the exclusive rights to the product, uh, really because of the efficacy. And like us, they shared that vision that it was an unsold, uh, an unsolved problem in the game of basketball. And it was just an unbelievable add-on product to sell uh, when selling a pair of sneakers. Um, really humbling uh, moment for us was when the NBA Trainers Association uh, endorsed the product and asked that the NBA have it available on every scores table uh, in the NBA. And that just rocket shipped the company. Uh, I then merged the business because we had great brand building, proprietary uh, product, an amazing uh, go-to-market strategy, but manufacturing this product was not easy. Uh, you alluded to Mission before. Mission was a skincare company that was also looking to create products that solve problems unique to athletes. Uh, the skincare product was originally created sunscreen that wouldn't drip in your eyes when you sweat, which was ideal for all athletes that are playing outdoors. Uh, we decided one plus one could equal five. Let's put the businesses together and created mission and Cork Grip really rocket shipped the business for us. Uh, but we launched north of 25 products after that. The one that, uh, you know, really changed everything was when we created the uh, instant cooling towels that we launched with Dwayne Wade, Serena Williams, Drew Brees, Reggie Bush, just uh, all amazing athlete partners, shareholders in the business. Uh, but now our product wasn't just for basketball players. It was for any and everybody, whether, uh, you know, you're, you're outdoors cutting your grass uh, or if you're riding your bike, uh, but something to bring your, your body temperature down, give you that instant cooling sensation. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was really a, a playbook. So it took all the learnings from running a business within NBC Universal. You know, you can make mistakes when you're with a big company and I was a lot younger and you have the support of, you know, thousands of people and resources and making those mistakes and then knowing to avoid those same mistakes when we went and created Mission uh, was really, really valuable. And, you know, since then, I've been blessed to invest and take active board seats in consumer goods, uh, brands, um, technology brands, uh, sports brands, um, and would really lean in to help the entrepreneur, you know, scale through uh, different challenges. And, um, when the opportunity came along to, you know, build a disruptive, clean 
sports nutrition brand, but truly clean, right? Not better for you, but really clean uh, with the backing of some of the best folks in sports uh, and beverage uh, with Keurig Dr. Pepper, LA Libations, Madison Square Garden. And to be able to bring my team uh, on the journey um, has really been a blessing and, and I'm having a heck of a time. Yeah, I was going to ask, because we'll definitely get into the, you know, arguably the second merger in your career. But um, initially, I think when you were with X2, you came on as a board member initially. And I was just going to ask, you know, you had, you know, advisor roles or, or you had, you know, investing, uh, active investing type of roles. Do you like that side of it? Or do you like to get your hands dirty and, you know, actually have, you know, more skin in the game? Yeah, I always get my hands dirty. And uh, for, for better or worse, I, uh, I'm, I'm a much better operator than a passive investor. And even in those situations, it's why, you know, with L. Catterton, who was an investor in X2, I said, look, I can help from the sidelines on the board. But then, you know, the company hit COVID and it was in big trouble. And I said, well, what if we pull this lever and try this and try this? And then I know the best thing for that business is, you know, a potential merger. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm always hands on and uh, like to build great teams to, you know, to implement a lot of that hands on activity. So a long winded way of saying I, I do both, but uh, have had the most success when I lean in. Where did the idea come from to merge the two businesses? Because, you know, you look at it now from hindsight and you go, okay, clean energy and you go, you know, better for you, kind of natural protein. You go, these, these fit well together. But I think if you look back at kind of where they started, they kind of seem like they maybe they, they didn't fit, but now they seem to fit. Like, was there something that you had to see a couple steps down the line and go, okay, I can put these things back together? Yeah. You know, I... I love the the analogy. It's it's chess, not checkers, right? Because you're 100 percent right. When you first look at it, it's like no, these two don't make sense uh, to go together. But there there was a few um, points that I had strong conviction around, and uh, most importantly, where I had the most conviction, uh, it was around Danny Stepper and LA Libations, and just seeing what uh, success he's had um, in terms of rapidly helping brands get to that next level, right? Whether body armor, core water, um, even with Zoa, which an energy drink was really intriguing to me. And I, I love the way he and his team had built their offering. And I knew Danny, I've known Danny for over 10 years from my entertainment days, from our media days, right? Danny has a, a very eclectic background and we've known each other um, and we've always wanted to work with each other. And what Danny's done probably better than, in my opinion, anybody in the industry is really understanding route to market, right? So your product can be as good as it can be. How do you align with the right strategic partners um, to truly disrupt and scale? And, you know, with X2, that was always a, a challenge, right? We had over 32 NBA, NFL, Major League Baseball teams buying our product for their players, which is an extremely high bar uh, to cross. And a lot of that is just really a testament to my team's relationships, right? We have amazing athlete investors, Saquon Barkley, Kawhi Leonard, Levante David, um, and our NSF certification on all of our different SKUs. But no matter how good your product is and no matter who's behind it, getting it on shelf in store is a very high task and, and nobody's done that better in, in my humble opinion um, for startup brands than than danny and when we sat down originally we're like yeah this this might not make sense but here's where we could be complimentary um we have an unbelievable roster of a-list investors that believe in our ability to build disruptive brands and to scale them. And you, LA Libations, have all the answers to the test in terms of how to make sure the products are great, how to find the right distribution partners, and really how to get in front of all those retail decision makers. 
And we've got investors that understand um, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, there is no overnight success. There, there have been a few, but nothing is truly overnight. And we believe and we have conviction that your brand don't quit is really strong. We have the ability to make that um, something that feels obtainable uh, and relatable uh, to the customers. And that's where, you know, kind of start leaning on some of those um, those skills and those relationships, right? So bringing on DeMar Hamlin um, has been game-changing for our business and bringing on Kendall Tool uh, has been game-changing as we're now getting ready to launch our, our energy line and bringing in all the, you know, investors and partners that we talked about um, and the right team, right? So the right product development, finance, operations, marketing uh, leaders in the business. I, I think that's what Danny and I said. If we do this, uh, we we have a strong opportunity to do something special. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Danny. Um, I think I share in a lot of the same thoughts in terms of, you know, where he obviously uh, has done extremely well. I think I made the joke when he recorded with me that something about, um, you know, the Mount Rushmore of, of beverage, like it'd be hard not to put uh, Danny on there because of just his success that he's had and, and kind of those multiple home runs that he's hit yeah. over the yeah. years. But um, it makes a lot of sense, you know, in the, in how now you kind of think about all the different assets each brand had and how they could be complementary to each other, how even the leadership teams, you know, have both complementary skills, but also, you know, some longstanding respect and admiration for each other. I think it's, it's good, you know, to have all of that because as a, as a team, especially when you're talking about beverage, I think it's, it's really a lot of times, you know, the team that you have will sometimes dictate success or not, because you had mentioned it, you know, product, it has to be great for retention purposes. And obviously people want to have great liquid, but at the end of the day, that's just kind of the entry fee to compete in today's market. I think you need to have, you know, a lot of different uh, skill sets that will get that thing through, you know, the consideration phase down to uh, the purchase and back up through retention. And like, how do you work through those? You know, I hate to say it like, you know, legacy or, or archaic kind of models of, of beverage that like you have to work through certain distribution and retail models. And if you don't have that information or you don't have the ability to understand that uh, and move water around as efficiently as possible, you're not going to be successful, even if you do have the most attention getting assets and you have a great liquid. Those things are things you need to have, but you need to also have all of these things like strategically aligned or linked together for them to break through all the noise because there's just a graveyard, I think, of great beverages that had, you know, strong investor teams or ownership teams or something like that. And, and it's just a matter of how do you create that perfect alignment with everything to push this thing above and beyond, you know, just the normal uh, levels of success. Yeah. And I think um, you have to have grit for lack of a better term. Like you, you know, you have to be battle tested. This is a tough industry, but me and my guys have done this in multiple industries and they're all tough. Um, but you have to surround yourself with people that understand this is not, it's not going to be easy. Um, it is going to take not only great liquid to your point, uh, but it's going to take tenacity, right? You, you've got to win at every level. Right? To make a, a bad sports analogy, but it, it is like football. You got to win at every level. You got to have a really good product. Uh, you have to be really good at marketing. You have to do it in a cost efficient manner because nothing's free. And you have to have the right retail relationships. Um, and you have to be disciplined about how and when you scale. And that's, that's a lot harder to do than it sounds um, because you want to take every door you can get. But if you can't hit all those blocks that I just mentioned and you can't deliver it and merchandise it, uh, you're only setting yourself up for, for failure. So we got really good thought partners around the table that you know keep us honest. So my CFO, uh, Kevin Foreman, uh, was with Nutribolt forever and uh, with C4. And, you know, he's just a phenomenal thought partner because a good entrepreneur is aggressive. They want to go, go, go. 
Uh, but having people like that that have experienced different things for me has always been really, really valuable. And you kind of alluded to both, you know, Danny's background having, you said, I think word interesting, but you know, he's definitely has a, you know, some of that entertainment background, you have entertainment background, which makes sense why you kept the don't quit name over the X2 name. And, and I don't want to talk bad about the X2 name because I come and cut my teeth from sports nutrition. So the names of brands in that space are always something similar to, to that, it seems like. But don't quit to me, when you think about entertainment, you think about, you know, maybe we're in the, you know, people say the attention economy and how do you get attention is that you storytell and how do you storytell? Arguably, you, you take these aspirational, you know, approaches, don't quit, obviously really aligns well with that. Your own brand can tell your story. You can get some of these great partners that you guys have tell their story, or you can somehow merge them together and figure out how do we have them tell their stories in a way that also aligns with what we're about, which I think is, you mentioned, you know, Damar Hamlin, you mentioned Kendall Toole. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of other ones that are going to have that same approach and have that both align with, you know, the top athletes in the world, the top, you know, whatever uh, profession in the world, but also, you know, every single person is going through something that arguably they are trying to not quit from. And it's like, you know, it has that appeal uh, all over the board, but it ends up being stories that really create the linkage. Yeah, you know that, Josh. And, and our whole brand positioning and our whole brand identity is about fueling perseverance. And Damar, Kendall have unbelievable stories of you know these don't quit uh, trials and tribulations and and successes. But that's not how we're building the brand and, and really why DeMar chose to work with us over a lot of other beverage opportunities that came his way was we want to tell the stories of the consumer because we all have don't quit moments. Every single one of us, right? We've all been knocked on our ass and we all have that opportunity to get back up and to keep going. And what we're doing with our persevering profiles is DeMar, Kendall, Jake are sitting down and interviewing customers, right? So we're working with our retail partners to get nominations of people that have had unbelievable stories of perseverance and, and sharing those stories. And I'm really, really proud of how those are coming out. Hopefully you, you've had a chance to check out the first one. Uh, we've got another one that we're putting together right now with Kendall. Um, and they're just amazing stories that make you feel good, right? That make you appreciate um, that we all have these challenges and how we face those challenges is is what um, is what the brand's all about. Yeah, I definitely love that. I mean, I, I definitely checked out the first one. I, I think my brain always just starts going down. You know, where is this going to end up? And like, I could see that path. I think now, you know, you guys are just executing and trying to figure out like, let's really carve that storytelling to really impact as many people as possible. Which I think, you know, it has such a broad appeal. It has such, uh, you know, one of those things where you could kind of take it anywhere and it still create a really good impact. It'll be exciting to see, you know, I think it's a really good name for anything, beverage. Um, if that's protein, is that energy? Is that supplements? And I know um, yeah. I might've asked you this before and it was mostly around, I think the fact that X2 at one time maybe had a powdered supplement and I can't remember what category it was, if it was hydration or what it was, but my mind, I think, naturally goes into this idea of like, will the brand eventually evolve into some non-beverage formats or are you guys sticking strictly to liquid? No. So when we did our merger, Don't Quit now owns all the patents and formulas of X2's very successful pre-workout powders and pre-workout energy shots. So, you know, all those... Uh, professional teams that we talked about uh, were using our powders as well as, um, you know, our, our energy drinks. And it's a, it's a great product, same thesis, philosophy, clean ingredients. Um, and will we go back there? Uh, eventually. Um, but right now we're, we're laser focused on uh, the launch of our, our clean, healthy energy plus hydration line. That's really how we're positioning it. 
uh, along with our protein line. And, you know, we'll be where Don't Quit started. My team and I have been in the lab on perfecting uh, our next launch will be our adult nutrition line. Um, so mm -hmm. very, very excited about that. Same exact philosophy, clean ingredients, truly clean ingredients uh, for the persevering senior um, that also wants that protein boost uh, with vitamins and key ingredients. Uh, but yeah, powders will, will be down the line. But like I said earlier in the meeting, we got to be disciplined, right? We can't be master of all. Um, we got to roll things out sequentially. And we've just got some amazing, like amazing retail partners that are just launching our energy drink, our protein drinks. Um, and then with adult nutrition coming online here uh, at the end of the summer, uh, we've got our hands full. And, and after that, we'll, we'll see where we go. Are we bringing back Body by Jake for uh, the adult nutrition? Not bringing it back. He's always been here. Uh, there, there is, you know. No, nobody uh, more passionate um, and, and really who resonates so well with that demographic who could speak towards clean, healthy ingredients and, and perseverance. So uh, Jake is extremely involved, uh, even, you know, in terms of making sure we have the right liquid and, and his reach uh, is significant. And uh, we're excited to roll up our sleeves with Jake as we get ready to launch that product. Appreciate that, Mark. And, and just the time as a whole and just everything, I, I appreciate it. Obviously, you are also dealing with some of the you know, kind of flooding and, and internet issues and all that kind of stuff like that. So you even taking the time out to do this and with all the stuff going on, I really appreciate it. I love your work, man. You do phenomenal, phenomenal work. It's really, I, I got to tell you, for, for entrepreneurs and for people in the industry, um, I learn. you know, you can't say that about every piece of content. I, I learn something every time I watch it. So amazing work. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 4,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that more than 90% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.